To make our Jim Dine inspired paintbrush art, first we need to decide what types of paintbrushes we'll be including in our artwork. You're going to need at least five of them in your artwork. Now how you position them on the artwork is up to you. In my sample, I've got a bunch that are going straight up and down, side by side. And that's what my demonstration is going to do here, just to make it a little easier to think about. So I'm going to be doing five brushes going vertical side by side. I'm going to start my first brush about right here, and I'm going to start it by making a light line about the length I want it to be. And then I'm going to make a line across the top because that's about how wide I want my brush to be and that's about where I want it to stop. So my first brush is going to be this kind of narrowish brush right here. Now in the examples, you see lots of examples of different kinds of paint brushes in the, in the lesson materials and you can go with whatever brushes you like. But this brush has kind of got a long rectangle at the top. And part of that rectangle is the metal part that holds the brush bristles. That's called the ferrule. And it always has a couple of little bumpy lines on it where it shows where it was pinned, the bristles were pinched into the ferrule. Now, so I got the middle part, I got the place where my bristles are going to be. The bristles can just be a bunch of lines right now. I'm going to go back over the thing with marker after I get the drawing done. So now I'm going to make the shape of the handle. And on this handle, the handle starts here and it curves inward and then it curves out again a bit. So I'm going to put a little curve at the bottom where I know it's going to end. And I'm going to start here. I'm just make a couple little curves that go in about the same amount on each side. And I'm going to come out again and bring the handle down to the bottom. Coming out a little bit, bring it down to the bottom. So it's kind of a S shape, long S shape. And you can erase and adjust if it's not the way you want it to look at first. I'm going to put a little cap on the bottom of this handle and I can erase these middle lines because this was just the guide. I don't need that anymore. And that's pretty much it. Just a basic paintbrush. Started with a rectangle shape at the top for the middle part and the bristles. Made this vase shaped handle on the bottom. Now I'm going to go on to a narrow brush. It looks kind of like this. I'm going to put it right next to this one. And again, I'm going, to, I'm going to start my brush about the same place, the same distance from the top, because I'm going to add some color up here at the top and I want to have some space for it. So I'm going to make the top of the brush and then I'm going to draw a line all the way down to the bottom. Now in these narrow brushes, they have a neck that tapers a little bit from the top. It's a little bit more narrow at the top, and it tapers a bit. It's got the little pinch mark where it's pinched onto the wooden handle. And then just make a long curve down to the point, because these slender brushes kind of come to a point at the end. I have a little bit of a roundness to it at the end, but mostly it's a point. Looks kind of like that. And we'll add some bristles on that too. My third brush is an oil painting brush called a fan brush. It's used for blending. It's kind of a fan shape, so I'm going to establish where I want the line to be for the handle. This is the center of the brush. And then I'm going to make a fan shape that goes like this. And that fan shape is going to come to the middle. Right, we're going to join with the line. And we have a little bump here and the rest of the metal part that connects to the wooden handle. And a bunch of fan-shaped bristles going out like that. 
handle once again. It has a little pinch here where it attaches to the wooden handle. And then we're going to draw the long line down to the bottom. Just make a rounded off little end of that handle. This is the brush you're making. So now we have one, two, three. I'm going to make an extra wide brush. I'm going to make this guy. It's kind of like a house painting brush. And I'm going to start that. I want to establish how high it's going to go. But I'm not going to draw the center yet because it's wide and I need some space for it. So I'm going to make my make a rectangle first. More of a square really. This will be more of a square. And I'll split that with a line. This is the metal part. This is the bristle part. I'll put a couple more lines for the pinch. The places where it pinches the bristles and the wooden handle. Put a few lines in there like that. I'm going to come down a little more on each side. Now I'm going to find about the middle. I'm going to draw a line down. I'm going to make this handle about the same length. And then I'll come in like I did in this one. I'll come in. And I'll go down and out slightly. And I'll round off the bottom like this. Okay. And then I'm going to put a little bit of a rough edge on the top for the edge of the bristles. And I'm just going to put a bunch of lines for bristles. Now. I'm going to do one more. This one is going to be this angled brush. Try to choose brushes that are different from each other to give it visual variety. Gives it interest. I'll put a little hole down here in the handle on this brush too. So I'm going to draw a line starting from the top to the bottom. This is a fairly narrow brush. I'm going to put an angle right here because it's the bristles are at an angle. And then I'm going to draw lines that come close to the center line here. Let me separate the metal part from the bristles. This is the bristles. This is the metal part. So I'll make a little line to separate that. Make a couple more lines here for the handle pinch. And actually I'll bring that down a little bit more. The metal part on that. Put another line here. And I'll draw the handle going all the way down to the bottom. And the bristles. So now for the next step, if you have it, you're gonna tr you're gonna want to trace over those lines to make them stand out. Whether it's a extra fine point sharpie or a regular sharpie, it really doesn't make any difference. I'm gonna use this extra fine point and I'll speed up this part of the video so you don't have to wait for the whole thing to be done. Alright, so now that I've got my line work all figured out, I'm going to add a little bit of shading to the sides of my brushes to give them a little more dimension. So on this side of each brush, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to make some shade lines. I'm going to bring it out a little bit on each side, on the side of it and at the bottom. Just to make it look like it's casting a bit of a shadow here on, on the sides. I'm going to do that on all the brushes on this side of them. Gonna follow the side. Put a shadow all the way down. Just to make it look like that brush is lying on the surface and casting some shadow and taking up some space. Okay, so once we have that, erase any stray lines that you don't want. Get those out of the way. And then 
we're going to start adding color. Now, how you add color is up to you. This is a perfect assignment for using watercolor because Jim Dine did a lot of textural work with paint and paint is ideal for this assignment. So if you have some watercolor, a little watercolor set at home, I've got this little box of watercolors. You could have, there's lots of different kinds of watercolor sets. You could use a different kind of paint. You can also use colored pencil and or marker to add the color that I'm about to add to this. It's entirely up to you how you do it, but it's more fun with watercolor and you're about to find out why. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to, this brush right here, I'm going to put some yellow on the tip of it and I'm going to extend that color up here because that brush has been painting up in this area. I'll do the same thing a little next to it. I'll go with a little red. Now what colors you put on your brushes is entirely up to you. There's no particular color scheme you have to use. You can use whatever colors appeal to you. But you want to get some colors in here because it makes it look like you've been painting. You can take a little extra water and make the colors bleed together a little bit. Like that. Okay, so we have a couple of brushes that look like they've been doing some painting. Keep going. I'll put some blue right here on this brush. And the more water you have on your brush, the more transparent your color will be. And you want some transparency around the bristles because you don't want them to be hidden completely. Okay. So I'm gonna use a little water and just kind of make those blend together a little bit. Let's get some orange over here, get some on the bristle. Now this orange is kind of opaque with when there's not enough water and you can see I'm hiding my bristles. So I'm going to add a little water and I'm going to move that color around. Just make it look a little more painty. Makes it look a little, makes it look, makes it look a little more fluid. So I'll get some green for the side. I'm going to add some green to this brush. And I'm going to move that color up here. Okay, so now we've got some brushes that have done some painting. They look kind of interesting because they have some shadow and some dimension. Now the last part is I'm going to take some color on my brush. I'm going to get a lot of watery color on my brush. And I am going to flick some spots of color all over the place because when people paint, paint gets everywhere. So we want this paint to look a little more chaotic, a little more fun, a little more out of control. So we are going to spatter paint all over this artwork. Get a little orange on my brush. The more water you have in the paint, the more spattery it will be. Now you're not going to be able to spatter if you don't have paint, but you can use marker or colored pencil to get this happening up in the top area. And what colors you use up there is up to you. Just use a variety of colors. I'm going to try to make it interesting. If you would like to paint the handles of your brushes like I've done here, you can do that. Or if you need to, want to add some other detail, want to add some big spatter, it's kind of interesting having the handles painted, but it's also interesting this way too. And the more you get in there with color, get some big spatter here and there, just go crazy, make it interesting. You can also do spatter like this by tapping your finger. A lot of you might be, might have tried that before with artwork. And that's pretty much it. That's how we create our Jim Dine inspired paintbrush artwork. And I hope you enjoy making yours. Again, if you don't have paint, get in there with colored pencils to make these color areas or markers, whatever it is you have that you can make color, even crayons will work. 
whatever you've got. Make sure you get some color in there. You can't do the spatter with without paint, but do your best with what you have, and I hope you have fun, and I will see you next time.